Okay, now let's go over the second part of this lesson, which is going to be much shorter, I believe. And it's about talking about the equations, those equations that require the taking of square roots. Let's first understand something very important, guys, about square roots. When you take the square root of a number, let me write, for example, 9. Okay, look at this number, number 9. When we take the square root of this number, which, which, which we symbolize with this uh, radical sign, as you, as you may remember. Remember when, when we don't write any number in here, I don't know if you're aware of this already, I don't know if I have, I have told you this, uh, we can ignore it, okay? This is the square, it, technically speaking, it, it should be written like this, the square root of nine, but mathematicians have agreed, like, uh, some sort of convention, then that when we talk about the square root of a number, we can dis dispense of the of the index. Okay, this is called the index. We can just uh, erase it. It's kind of like when you write x uh, to what power is this elevated to one, but we never write it down. When it's one, we never write it down. It's the same idea here. When we take the square root of a number. We almost never write the square. If you if you want to write it down, that's fine, but you can actually ignore it. Okay. And so what is this? What does it mean to take the square root of a number? Well, that's an operation that we perform on a number, and the result of such operation will be a number, a number such that multiplied by itself two times, okay, will give you the number inside the radical sign. I repeat, the square root of 9 is equal to that number, which we don't know yet, maybe, such that when you multiply this number by itself two times or twice, you will get 9 as a result. Well, since this is a very simple example, you know the answer, right? The answer must be 3 or, or minus 3. You, we have these two possibilities. Why? Because 3, when you multiply it by itself two times, you get 3 times 3, which is 9, which is the number inside the radical sign, you see? And the same is going to happen with, with this other solution. Minus 3 times minus 3 will also give you 9, which is the number that you began with. So the, when you take the square root of any number, any number, you will get two solutions, one positive and one negative. It's the same number, but one should be positive and one should be negative. Okay, that's basically that's basically all we have to know about the square root. And the other thing is that when you take the square root of a number that is already raised to the square, okay, then the answer is going to be just x or, as I told you, minus x. Okay, basically what you're gonna, what you need to understand is that the square root sort of like cancels the square. Okay, if you have one number and then you raise it to the square and then you take the square root of that result, basically you're gonna end up with the same number, either positive or negative. Okay, so you may think of the square root as kind of like the opposite operation to squaring and that's all we need to know well no there's another thing to know <laughs> i'm sorry one first thing to know second thing to know and the third thing the third thing to know is this what's going to happen when we try to perform something like this the square root of minus four what do you think this is going to be what what do you think is going to be the answer to this what number, when I multiply it by itself two times, will give me minus 4? Are there any numbers with that feature? No. No, there aren't. Okay? No number, no possible number that we know at this point in, in our mathematical development. We know no numbers that when you multiply it by themselves two times will give you my, a negative number. There's nothing with, with this number. There's nothing wrong with this number being 4. The problem is with the negative, okay? 
when you multiply any number by itself, you know, 2 times 2, that's going to be 4, minus 2 times minus 2, that's also going to be 4. So there is no possibility of finding some number a such that a times a will be minus 4. So this problem cannot be solved. Taking the square root of a negative number has no answers at this point, okay? Later, later in third or fifth semesters, you will, you will be taught maybe, maybe some numbers for which you actually uh, have an answer for this problem, okay? Some other types of numbers whose squares are negative, and thus we will be able to solve these equations. But not yet. You don't know those numbers yet, and we don't care about those numbers yet. So basically, this is not possible. At this point, this is not possible. Okay, so that's all you need to know about the square root, guys. Now let's actually exemplify these ideas with some examples. Again, I'm going to give you four examples. Example number one, what about this equation? x minus 3, all of that raised to the square equals 16. So look, how do we solve this equation? What we do is we take the square root in both sides. Remember, an, an equation, whatever you do in one side, you have to do on the other side at the same time. If you do that, you will be well. So let's do it. This is my left side. I'm going to take the square root of that side. And this is my right side. I'm going to take the square root of that side. And first, I'm going to just uh, express what I'm, gonna, what I'm about to do. Next, the square root cancels the square. And all I'm left with is x minus 3, OK, plus, plus and minus x minus 3. OK, remember, there are two possibilities. When you take the square root of a number, you always have the possibility of plus and the possibility of the minus solution. And when you take the square root of 16, what's going to be the answer? Well, since this is also a, a, a very simple number, you may know that the square root of 16 is 4, plus 4 and minus 4, because all of these, these two possibilities, plus 4 times plus 4 is 16, and minus 4 times minus 4 is also 16. So there, there you go. You see, we have, we have these two possibilities. Now, what do we do with this? It looks kind of weird, right? What does this mean? Like plus minus this number equals plus minus this other number. I know this looks weird. You must understand what, that what this means is kind of like it's a shorthand for writing all of these equations. Look, first, you take the plus of this equals the plus of this. So you go like this. This is going to be a quite long. So this is one equation that is inside in here. Now you take the plus with the minus of this. So you have this. Now take the minus of this equals the plus of this. This is equation number three. And the minus of this equals the minus of this. So minus x minus 3 equals minus 4. So it seems as though there are four equations contained in this equation. And that's in fact correct. That's in fact correct. But I'm going to tell you a very short trick in order to reduce this amount of equations. Okay? Because two of these equations are equal to other two equations of this set. Why? Because of this. Look, for example, equation 1 and equation 4 are the same equation. Okay? Why do I say this? Because if you take equation 4, look at this equation, you have minus this number equals minus 4. Fine. What happens if you multiply this equation, equation 4, by 1 minus? in both sides, or by minus 1, I should say. What happens if you multiply this equation, which is equation number 4, what happens if you multiply it by minus 1 in both sides? You're going to get minus 1 times minus this, 
equals minus 1 times minus 4, and you get minus 1 times minus times minus, you get plus, so you're going to get this number, and minus times minus equals plus. So you're going to get, in the end, x minus 3 equals 4, which is the same as equation 1. You see? So these two equations, guys, the equations with the same signs, plus and plus, and minus and minus, are in fact the same equation. There is no difference. There is no difference between those two equations. And the same, the same happens when you consider this equation and this, this equation, the equations with the flipped signs, plus and minus, and minus and plus. It's the same idea. They are equivalent equations. They are completely equivalent. What do I mean by this? That you can get one out of the other by some manipulation. For example, if you take the, the, the equation number two, which is like this, right? This is equation number two. Can you see? Now multiply both sides by minus one, and you should get this. If you if you do that, you will get minus x minus three, like so, and on this side you're gonna get four. You see? So this equation is equivalent to this equation, and this equation. It's actually equation number three. So basically, what I want you to understand is this. Even though it looks scary to have, when you do this type of process with the square roots, and you, you end up with this type of equation, like plus minus some number equals plus minus another number, technically speaking, you have four equations, but of those four, there are only two. Two equations are equivalent to two other equations. Okay, what are the, the equations that are equivalent? The ones with the equal signs, with the equal signs, okay, plus, plus, and minus, and minus. And also the ones that are equivalent are the ones with the changed signs, plus and minus, and minus and plus. These two equations are equivalent. So my suggestion is this. Now that I have explained that to you, I hope you have understood more or less what I just said. Now that I have explained that, let me give you a short trick so that you don't, you don't end up with so many equations. At this point, let me backtrack. Let's suppose we are here already. So, what are you supposed to do in order to avoid this pit? Okay, when you take the square root uh, on both sides of an equation, you only have to write the plus and minus thing on one side, only on one side, either side. It doesn't matter which which side, but only one side. For example, in here. What is my my solution? X minus 3. And I'm going to leave it like that without the plus and minus in here. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm just going to write the plus and minus thing with the, with, with this number. Okay. So it's going to be plus and minus 4. That's all you need to do, guys. That's all you need to do. Don't write the plus and minus here because of what I showed you. Okay. In the end, even though you're going to get four equations, Basically, you have two pairs of two equivalent equations. So this is enough. This is enough. So now, out of here, how many equations do I need to solve now? Two equations. x minus 3 equals plus 4. That's one of my equations. Or your equation, x minus 3 equals minus 4. One equation with the plus, one equation with the minus. Can you see? And then solve independently each of these two equations and you're done. So you're going to get x equals uh, 7, right? Or x equals minus 1. So this is my first solution, this is my second solution, and I'm done. These are my two solutions, guys. 7 and minus 1. If you put 7 in here or minus 1 in here, and then you perform the whole operation, you're going to get that the equation checks. So that's how it works. Now the next example, I'm going to solve it much quicker now that you know how it works. 2x minus 1 squared equals 9. Okay, what do we do? We're having a square, so we need to take a square root in both sides in order to get rid of this square. So let's do it. I'm going to take the square root in both sides of my equation. The square root 
cancels the square, so I'm going to get 2x minus 1. I will not write this in this part. I will not write plus and minus. Only in this part. The square root of 9 is equal to plus 3, but also minus 3. Because these two numbers, plus 3 and minus 3, when you multiply them together, I'm sorry, when you multiply them, when you multiply each of them by itself, you're going to get 9. So the plus and minus only goes in this part. Then, what does this mean? This means that you have two possible equations to solve. 2x minus 1 equals plus 3. Or the other possibility, 2x minus 1 equals minus 3. Then, independently, you solve each of these equations and you're done. Let's do that very quickly. There you go. This is a minus 1. Doesn't look very well. Okay. So this is my first solution. This is my second solution. My first solution is 2. My second solution is minus 1. I can also write the solution set as 2 and minus 1. And I'm done. These two solutions, 2 and minus 1, satisfy my original equation. You see? So you can get this done in about 30 seconds. It's very simple. Number 3. 1 minus 2x to the square equals 5. Let's do the same. We have a square. So in this case, we need to take the square root in both sides. So I can get rid of this square. Like that. The square root eliminates the square of this number. And we get 1 minus 2x. And in here, there is a common misconception, OK? The misconception or the misunderstanding at this point is that your brain wants to look, well, you, some of you, maybe more than some, like most of you, want, want to calculate this number, the square root of 5. You want to see something like, like 2.37, something like this, okay? You, you want to see the decimal representation of this number, the decimal representation of this number, of the square root of 5. Is that necessary? No. No, it's not. Okay, you can just keep it that way. If the number inside in here is not a perfect square, for example, the square root of 9, you can get that very uh, easily and very well. Or the square root of 16, which is equal to this. Or the square root of 25, which is this, etc. When that doesn't happen, when you don't, have, when you don't have a, uh, when you don't have a perfect square inside the radical. You can just keep this number. That's it. The square root of five. Keep it as it is. Keep it. Keep it rep represented in this way. Just do this. Plus minus the square root of five. That's all. That's all you have to do. You don't have to take your calculator, which I'm gonna do now. Okay. If I take my calculator and I press the square root of five, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get a lot of numbers. I'm gonna get all of this, look. I'm going to get plus minus 2.23606797 oh, seven, seven. and my calculator has no more display so it's going to stop right there but if you think that this number stops right there, you're wrong. This number continues on and on and on forever. Okay, and there is no there actually is no pattern to these decimals, okay? So if you make them the following, you would be making a mistake. Look, if you say, ah, let me just keep two decimals like that. The square root of 5 is equal to 2.23. That is wrong. That is wrong. It's not equal to 2.23. This is just an approximation to this number. You see, you see what I mean by just keep this number written in that way, just keep it like that. Keep it like the square root of 5. That's it. You don't need to calculate it. You don't need to calculate it. Imagine that, you know, let me give you another example of what I mean by this. Imagine that in some problem, 
let me let me go very simply. Look at my, 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 I want you to understand with a very simple count, very simple example. Suppose that I give you this equation x minus three to the one million. equals zero okay x minus this number which is three to the one million equals zero if you feel the need to calculate this number stop it stop that that desire to actually look at this as some form of decimal representation like this okay like when you see two to the two equals four okay yeah we can do this one we can calculate two to the two, it's gonna be four because it's very simple and it's a very tiny number, okay? It's just four, but this is a huge number, guys. This number, three to the one million, that's an insanely huge number. So there is no way, there is no way in which you can represent this number in your notebook, okay? You, you would run out of pages. This is an extremely long number, thousands and thousands and thousands of digits. So just keep it written in this way. There is no need for you to calculate it. What is the solution to this equation? Okay, it's this. You see, all I need to do is add this number in both sides so that x, is, x equals now 3 to the 1 million, and I'm done. Do I need to calculate this number? No, 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 no. It's the same in here. This is enough. Keep the square root of 5 written in that way why because if you actually take your calculator and and tell me that this is equal to 2.23 or something like that that would be wrong because this is just this is just an approximation of this number try to understand that it's very important you understand that and i'm going to make you understand it in second semester Okay, so now, what now? Okay, so let, then just solve those two equations. What are my equations? 1 minus 2x equals the positive square root of 5, or 1 minus 2x equals the negative square root of, of 5. That's it. Try to, try to handle this number as if it was just a 3 or a 5 or something. There is nothing special about the square root of a number, okay? Don't look at these numbers as, some, as something weird. Okay, so uh, we get, well, let's solve this equation. We get this. Then I'm going to multiply by minus 1 in both sides. And then I'm going to divide over 2 in both sides. Okay, there you go. Fine. Now, this other, well, you do this other on your own. But this is one this is one of my solutions, guys. You see how weird it looks? There's well, it looks weird. There is nothing weird about this. Minus the square root of 5 plus 1 over 2. That is a perfectly good solution. Get used to see these types of numbers. And you do the same in here, and that's it. Okay. And finally, the last example, number four. We have this. Okay, and the last example I was saying uh, it's gonna be the following. Okay, there you go. So same idea. First, I'm gonna put it in the following way. Okay, like some number to the square equals some other number, just like the three past examples. And just like in the last example of the previous lesson, this equation has no solutions, okay? Why? Well, just look at this. What are we trying to do? We're trying to solve this equation. Some number to the square, all of this number in, bet in, bet in between parentheses, to the square equals a negative number. Such a thing is impossible. It's not possible to have any number, in this case, all of this number, to the square and having the result of some number to the square being negative. 
that's an impossibility. The square of any number, I don't care what number, I don't even have to look at this. Like imagine that this was like uh, crossed out or something, I don't know. The square root of whatever, I don't even care, cannot be minus six, okay? So I immediate, immediately conclude, conclusion, there are no solutions. There are no solutions. Why? Because the square of any number cannot be negative. I don't care what number. Imagine that I give you this number, x to the one third, the square root of x to the one third, all of this to the one hundred to the square and the square root of all of that. And then all of this to the square, okay? The square of all of this that's inside, which looks pretty hardcore. Imagine that I give you this equation. The square of all of this equals minus 3. Okay? You don't need to do anything, guys. I know that this looks complex. Like, this, all of this number, the square root of all of this weird stuff. I know it looks complex. But you don't even care. You don't, you don't even need to understand this. Like, you just go, okay, this equation is asking me to find the number x such that the square of all of this weird number needs to be minus 3. That's impossible. It's impossible because the square root of any number whatsoever, I don't care what it is, all of this thing, the square root of this cannot be negative. So my conclusion is no solutions, period. There is nothing to be done. And that's my argument. And it's a perfectly good argument. Okay, guys. So that's how you solve equations by taking square roots. And let's get to work on the learning activity.